In particle physics, prions are point particles, conceived of as subcomponents of quarks and leptons. The word was coined by Jogesh Patti and Abdus Salam in 1974. Interest in prion models peaked in the 1980s but has slowed as the standard model of particle physics continues to describe the physics mostly successfully, and no direct experimental evidence for lepton and quark compositeness has been found. In the hadronic sector, some effects are considered anomalies within the standard model. For example, the proton spin puzzle, the EMC effect, the distributions of electric charges inside the nucleons as found by Hofstadter in 1956, and the ad hoc CKM matrix elements. When the term, prion, was coined, it was primarily to explain the two families of spin minus one half fermions, leptons, and quarks. More recent prion models also account for spin-1 bosons, and are still called prions. Each of the prion models postulates a set of fewer fundamental particles than those of the standard model, together with the rules governing how those fundamental particles combine and interact. Based on these rules, the prion models try to explain the standard model, often predicting small discrepancies with this model and generating new particles and certain phenomena, which do not belong to the standard model. Goals of prion models Prion research is motivated by the desire to reduce the large number of particles, many that differ only in charge, to a smaller number of more fundamental particles. For example, the electron and positron are identical except for charge, and prion research is motivated by explaining that electrons and positrons are composed of similar prions with the relevant difference accounting for charge. The hope is to reproduce the reductionist strategy that has worked for the periodic table of elements. Explain the three generations of fermions. Calculate parameters that are currently unexplained by the standard model, such as particle masses, electric charges, and color charges, and reduce the number of experimental input parameters required by the standard model. Provide reasons for the very large differences in energy masses observed in supposedly fundamental particles, from the electron neutrino to the top quark. Provide alternative explanations for the electro-weak symmetry breaking without invoking a Higgs field, which in turn possibly needs a supersymmetry to correct the theoretical problems involved with the Higgs field. Supersymmetry itself has theoretical problems. Account for neutrino oscillation and mass. Make new non-trivial predictions, such as cold dark matter candidates. Explain why there exists only the observed variety of particle species reproduce only these observed particles since the prediction of non-observed particles is one of the major theoretical problems, as, for example, with supersymmetry. <laughs> Background Before the standard model SM was developed in the 1970s the key elements of the standard model known as quarks were proposed by Murray Gell-Mann and George Zweig in 1964. Physicists observed hundreds of different kinds of particles in particle accelerators. These were organized into relationships on their physical properties in a largely ad hoc system of hierarchies, not entirely unlike the way taxonomy grouped animals based on their physical features. Not surprisingly, the huge number of particles was referred to as the particle zoo. The standard model, which is now the prevailing model of particle physics, dramatically simplified this picture by showing that most of the observed particles were mesons, which are combinations of two quarks, or baryons, which are combinations of three quarks, plus a handful of other particles. The particles being seen in the ever more powerful accelerators were, according to the theory, typically nothing more than combinations of these quarks. Topic: <laughs> Comparisons of quarks, leptons, and bosons. Within the standard model, there are several classes of particles. One of these, the quarks, has six types, of which there are three varieties in each, dubbed colors red, green, and blue, giving rise to quantum chromodynamics. Additionally, there are six different types of what are known as leptons. Of these six leptons, there are three charged particles, the electron, muon, and tau. The neutrinos comprise the other three leptons, and for each neutrino there is a corresponding member from the other set of three leptons. 
In the standard model, there are also bosons, including the photons, W+, W-, and Z bosons, gluons and the Higgs boson, and an open space left for the graviton. Almost all of these particles come in left-handed and right-handed versions see chirality. The quarks, leptons, and W boson all have antiparticles with opposite electric charge. Unresolved problems with the standard model The standard model also has a number of problems which have not been entirely solved. In particular, no successful theory of gravitation based on a particle theory has yet been proposed. Although the model assumes the existence of a graviton, all attempts to produce a consistent theory based on them have failed. Kalman observes that, according to the concept of atomism, fundamental building blocks of nature are indivisible bits of matter that are ungenerated and indestructible. Quarks are not truly indestructible, since some can decay into other quarks. Thus, on fundamental grounds, quarks are not themselves fundamental building blocks but must be composed of other, fundamental quantities prions. Although the mass of each successive particle follows certain patterns, predictions of the rest mass of most particles cannot be made precisely, except for the masses of almost all baryons, which have been recently described very well by the model of D'Souza. The standard model also has problems predicting the large scale structure of the universe. For instance, the SM generally predicts equal amounts of matter and antimatter in the universe. A number of attempts have been made to fix this through a variety of mechanisms, but to date none have won widespread support. Likewise, basic adaptations of the model suggest the presence of proton decay, which has not yet been observed. <laughs> Motivation for prion models Prion theory is motivated by a desire to replicate the achievements of the periodic table, which reduced the elements to three building blocks, and the later standard model which tamed the «particle zoo» by finding more fundamental answers to the huge number of arbitrary constants present in the standard model. Several models have been proposed in an attempt to provide a more fundamental explanation of the results in experimental and theoretical particle physics, using names such as «parton» or «prion» for their basic particles. The particular prion model discussed below has attracted comparatively little interest to date among the particle physics community, in part because no evidence has been obtained so far in collider experiments to show that the fermions of the standard model are composite. Attempts <inaudible> 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 A number of physicists have attempted to develop a theory of pre quarks from which the name prion derives in an effort to justify theoretically the many parts of the standard model that are known only through experimental data. Other names which have been used for these proposed fundamental particles or particles intermediate between the most fundamental particles and those observed in the standard model include prequarks, subquarks, mayones, alphons, quinks, rishons, tweedles, helons, haplons, y particles, and primons. Prion is the leading name in the physics community. Efforts to develop a substructure date at least as far back as 1974 with a paper by Patty and Salam in Physical Review. Other attempts include a 1977 paper by Terazawa, Chikashige and Akama, similar, but independent, 1979 papers by Naaman, Harari, and Shoup, a 1981 paper by Fritsch and Mandelbaum, and a 1992 book by D'Souza and Kalman. None of these have gained wide acceptance in the physics world. However, in a recent work D'Souza has shown that his model describes well all weak decays of hadrons according to selection rules dictated by a quantum number derived from his compositeness model. In his model leptons are elementary particles and each quark is composed of two primons, and thus, all quarks are described by four primons. Therefore, there is no need for the standard model Higgs boson and each quark mass is derived from the interaction between each pair of primons by means of three Higgs-like bosons. In his 1989 Nobel Prize acceptance lecture, Hans Demelt described a most fundamental elementary particle, with definable properties, which he called the cosmon, as the likely end result of a long but finite chain of increasingly more elementary particles. Composite <laughs> <laughs> Higgs 
Many prion models either do not account for the Higgs boson or rule it out, and propose that electro-weak symmetry is broken not by a scalar Higgs field but by composite prions. For example, Fredrickson prion theory does not need the Higgs boson, and explains the electro-weak breaking as the rearrangement of prions, rather than a Higgs-mediated field. In fact, the Fredrickson prion model and the D'Souza model predict that the standard model Higgs boson does not exist. Rishan model The Rishan model is the earliest effort to develop a prion model to explain the phenomenon appearing in the standard model of particle physics. It was first developed by Chaim Harari and Michael A. Shoup independently of each other, and later expanded by Harari and his then student Nathan Seiberg. The model has two kinds of fundamental particles called Rishans, which means primary in Hebrew. They are T third, since it has an electric charge of one third E, or tohu, which means unformed in Hebrew Genesis, and V vanishes, since it is electrically neutral, or vohu. Bohu means void in the Hebrew Tanakh, the Old Testament, though bohu may be pronounced as vohu by modern Israelis when the B is preceded by a vowel and thus lacks dagesh. All leptons and all flavors of quarks are three Rishon ordered triplets. These groups of three Rishans have spin minus one half. The Rishan model illustrates some of the typical efforts in the field. Many of the prion models theorize that the apparent imbalance of matter and antimatter in the universe is in fact illusory, with large quantities of prion level antimatter confined within more complex structures. Criticisms <coughs> 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 The mass paradox One prion model started as an internal paper at the Collider Detector at Fermilab CDF around 1994. The paper was written after an unexpected and inexplicable excess of jets with energies above 200 GeV were detected in the 1992–1993 running period. However, scattering experiments have shown that quarks and leptons are point-like down to distance scales of less than 10-18 m or 1 1,000th of a proton diameter. The momentum uncertainty of a prion of whatever mass confined to a box of this size is about 200 GeV, c, 50,000 times larger than the rest mass of an up quark and 400,000 times larger than the rest mass of an electron. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that delta x delta p 1 2 display style operator name delta x c d o t operator name delta p g e q t f r a c 1 2 h b a r and thus anything confined to a box smaller than delta x display style operator name delta x would have a momentum uncertainty proportionally greater Thus, the prion model proposed particles smaller than the elementary particles they make up, since the momentum uncertainty delta p display style operator name delta p should be greater than the particles themselves. So the prion model represents a mass paradox. How could quarks or electrons be made of smaller particles that would have many orders of magnitude greater mass energies arising from their enormous momenta? This paradox is resolved by postulating a large binding force between prions cancelling their mass energies. <laughs> Conflicts with observed physics Prion models propose additional unobserved forces or dynamics to account for the observed properties of elementary particles, which may have implications in conflict with observation. For example, now that the LHC's observation of a Higgs boson is confirmed, the observation contradicts the predictions of many prion models that did not include it. Prion theories require that quarks and leptons should have a finite size. It is possible that the Large Hadron Collider will observe this when raised to higher energies. In popular culture 
In the 1948 reprint, edit of his 1930 novel Skylark 3, E. E. Smith postulated a series of subelectrons of the first and second type with the latter being fundamental particles that were associated with the gravitation force. While this may not have been an element of the original novel the scientific basis of some of the other novels in the series was revised extensively due to the additional 18 years of scientific development, even the edited publication may be the first, or one of the first, mentions of the possibility that electrons are not fundamental particles. In the novelized version of the 1982 motion picture Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, written by Vonda McIntyre, two of Dr. Carol Marcus's Genesis Project team, Vance Madison and Delwyn March, have studied sub-elementary particles they've named boojums and snarks in a field they jokingly call kindergarten physics because it is lower than elementary analogy to school levels James P Hogan's 1982 novel Voyage from Yesteryear discussed prions called tweedles the physics of which became central to the plot topic see also Technicolor physics Prion star Prion degenerate matter Rishon model Topic Notes Topic Further reading Ball, P. two thousand seven Splitting the Quark Nature. doi.10.1038, news.2007.292. Have we hit bottom yet? An article about prions and minuteness. <laughs>